Good evening, Ross Lyon. Good old Brad, how are you? Going really well. Oh, mate. Congratulations. Big win yesterday. Um, and, of course, a little little bit of a lull in the second quarter, but Ross, you and Carl and I, well, Carl and I played in low, lower teams and you've probably played in the lower team and coached against them. I've played for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> and you've coached against them too. It doesn't matter how good you are, you, you generally lose the handle for at least a few minutes, don't you? Yeah, well, I took off three out of four quarters. Oh, excuse me, apologies to the listeners. Um, second quarter, we just lost our way. Um, probably got too aggressive running forward, and we turned it over out of the middle, and they just scored really quickly out the back. So, um, But we addressed that really quickly and played um, some in, a, in the manner we wanted to. Won the ground ball really strongly like we did the week before against Carlton, and I saw we mucking around with a bit in the second, so second half, you know, kicked it longer and got more direct and got a lot of reward in the scoreboard. Really pleased to see the, uh, you know, l- younger, lesser like, like Nick Subin, a bloke who you've challenged and given opportunity to and given him different roles, just rise to the level he did on the weekend. I thought that that was arguably his best game for the season. You're spot on. He was terrific against uh, Carlton. He's got a real consistency about him now, and that stems from his preparation and his training, and to the point where we're starting him, you know, in the first centre bounces, and we've had Fife out and Hill out and Monday out, and, and Lockie Neal's really stepped up. He's starting to get real reward for effort. He can seriously play the game, and he's got a lot of growth in him, but um, and I thought Tom Sherwood on the weekend was quite solid, so we've got, you know, three second-year players trying to command the spot, so it bears well for the future. Uh, and added bonus, Ross, as you say, you've still got some blokes to come back and some, um, you know, some regular starters too, which is good. So that keeps pressure on, and so that means everybody in the team is trying to hold their spot, so generally you get an even effort. Yeah, and that's something we spoke about before the game, that there's competition for spots, and, um, you know, you really need to bring the effort we're after to keep commanding your spot, because we've got four players that have probably been entrenched in the team you know, out, Pierce, Ibbots and McFarlane and Hill um, and some more pressure coming up from Peel. Uh, Clark, with his uh, game on the weekend, thought he was absolutely outstanding, won plenty of the footy, went forward, kicks a goal, takes a good mark. Just with Sandy, he's uh, he's not... He doesn't seem to be right at his, at his best yet. Can't probably expect that to be. But, but he's marking. I mean, he's got to take more marks than none, doesn't he, to have impact going forward against better teams? Well, yeah, we like him. I thought he was really effective against Carlton. Uh, I thought Zach Clark, I've actually got the best player on the ground. I thought he was really significant. And But uh, if Damon's not marking, he's coming to ground. So when we went more direct and worked off him, we scored quite heavily. So um, he was really effective against Carlton. It was an incredibly windy and blustery day. So when you turn the 13 centimetres and you've got four blokes hanging off your Guernsey, it's pretty hard to sort of um, take a lot of clunks. So he wasn't as effective as he was the week before, but we're really confident he's building really strongly. So there's no real concern there. And he gave our midfield first use at the stoppages. Uh, look, I think we all admire Sheedy to a degree in what he's done, but I thought it was a bit cheap, uh, the shot that he had at you and the, t- and the draw that you've had this year, because I think at the start of the season, when we all looked at it, we thought, well, this is going to be a difficult time for Fremantle. And uh, most of them said in hindsight last year that it was Adelaide who had the Chook Lotto. Yeah, look, you know, when you've been smacked by 120 points and you're an expansion team and you're trying to get the AFL up and going Western Sydney, Kevin is, is remarkable at sort of throwing out red herrings and distractions. So it was about a, a five-minute analysis of our draw. And I think if you're looking at it now, we're obviously playing teams below us. But uh, I, I think when you go through it, we've had a pretty significant draw and, and one challenge by significant injury. So... Uh, yeah, it doesn't worry me too much, and Kevin's just doing his job, really. You know. <laughs> I mean, it comes down when it comes down to it, Ross. At the moment, um, look, the the sides that you've beaten in the eight are Richmond. You beat them by a point. Uh, they got you, I think, the next time round. Collingwood by twenty seven. You drew with Sydney. So you know the yeah. challenge still remains ahead of you, even though you've got three lower. And we, you know, by, yeah. by yeah. a kick or whatever, you know. So yeah, so so we lost. In yeah. the in the end, mate, it's it's really tight at the top, isn't it? I mean, even even the sides that are still fighting it out for ninth spot, and they may get in if Essendon come out. There's still a lot to play out in this season. Oh, it's a very even season. I mean, to see what Collingwood did to Sydney, you know, Hawthorne, you know, can can get challenged. You know, Adelaide beat North. It's a really difficult season, and if you if you're off your game and you're not at your absolute best, you're going to, you're going to get beaten. So. I've been thrilled with our group's consistency of effort, uh, their will to win, and you know, we're no doubt we're starting to play our best football. 
and we need to continue that over the next three weeks and particularly in Melbourne at the MCG and what's going to be a wet and blustery day. So even the Richmond game, we were in that. We, I don't think we got blown away and we sported the ball. So, um, you know, we're really confident our best is, you know, right up there with the best. Now, I know you don't like to talk about it, but Valentine obviously was subbed out early. Uh, is anything significant yeah. with him and are you likely to leave him home this week? No, he vomited at half time and he'd had a tight... He'd come back from a three-week hamstring, so he tightened a little bit. He could have kept going, there was no doubt about that, and we we're trying to find one, and we thought... And he had a head knock early, he'd banging himself around like he does, so he, he wasn't thrilled, but uh, he accepted <laughs> and supported the decision. He loves a goal, Peyton, so, um, yeah, he wasn't thrilled. But, uh, yeah, he's fine. And I feel it's been confirmed the corpse, so he's fine, and he will definitely play as it stands, and we're really hopeful. Ibbotson will get up this week as well. Now, mate, there was a little bit going on down at Peel Thunder on the weekend about Jesse Crichton. I've been asked by John Saparovich at his here uh, whether he played uh, in, in the half a game that he played. Is he t- ticking enough boxes and obviously losing Viv Mitchie on the weekend and him being out for the season? Uh, how, how do you think he is going and whether he earns another contract? So Viv Mitchie contract? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I think he's out. I think he's fighting for the Sandover medal, isn't he? So we'd be pretty keen to contract him and Jesse Crichton's only played half a game. Um, I was down there. I took the three kids down there, and um, I was a bit concerned that they were getting blown away. And they got the 13 points, and Alex lost the gutway 50 medal pen, and they blew out the 28. But they certainly fought back really well, won the clearances. I think Jesse Crichton half time was serviceable, but I thought all the other players really stood up because they lost Mitchie, and obviously Crichton got tapped out at half time because he needed to be a functioning emergency. So. But anyone else down there really dug in, you know. Well, just another one here, Hanneth. How come he didn't play on the weekend? Yeah, he's uh, got some slight issues that um, needed to be managed. So um, we all talk about resting and managing. So Jack has played a number of AFL games, a big pre-season, and he's um, been a little bit sore, and he just needed to be managed. So uh, it's part of that um, trying to preserve him for... The greater good. I know you'd be interested, Ross. Uh, Bell's just been bowled by Harris, so uh, six for in the cricket now. So we'll update our listeners a little later on that. Well, oh. I'm, someone will tweet that. Won't we? One of the players played their iPhone and tweet it, won't we? <laughs> hey, Warner. <laughs> Uh, or Woody. <laughs> yeah, or Woody is good at the tweets. Uh, yeah, and, yeah. And, and as you say, uh, Melbourne this week, they, they were okay. I watched a bit of their game. It was hard to watch, but it was uh, they played against Gold Coast. And Gold Coast, as we know, we all respect them at the moment. They're going pretty well. And Melbourne were able to run them to at least 16 points, where probably most thought they might get blown away. Excuse me. Sorry to your listeners again. Oh, you're spot on. Had more entries, more shots on goal in a really difficult uh, environment up there against a quality team. So, Neil Craig's how many effect there, they're really improving. And, you know, there's, there's no guarantee. So, we'll have to come and, and be on our game. And we're pretty keen to bank four points. So, it's an opportunity to improve and uh, accept the challenge of um, going over there and locking them up. Hey, Bross, they would have wanted to improve after being smashed by GWS and North Melbourne in the previous couple of weeks. They they have been very ordinary, mate, and, uh, you know, let's hope that they do turn up and give you a contest. Yeah, I'm sure they will. But it just shows how you know, GWS back them and they come over probably full of hope and expectation and, you know, if you're not on your game, you, you get smacked. So it's a real... Um, Reminder for us all. I've heard you state several times, Luke McFarlane, round 23, no chance of any earlier? No, 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 not that I'm aware of, so, right. um, yeah, no. Keep an eye on that. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Thanks, Carl. Ross. All the best, Ross. Line there. So uh, there's our first coach back to back, and there's another wicket. So that looks like to me that Pryor's been bowled first ball. So that would mean.